Hello, virtuous viewers. I'm the angel Evangelo. Tis the season of giving. And the angels of heartful Zambia are singing praises for your every good deed. With Christmas fast approaching, we joyfully continue our special tribute to the Son of God, Lord Jesus Christ, on this anniversary of His holy birth. Throughout the history of mankind, the divine messages are often shrouded in mystery. Prophets, messiahs, or whichever names you call them, are often persecuted and oppressed. Their words are obscured. But how do we distinguish the true from the false? To do so, one can only rely on the divine's guidance, and the truth will reveal itself to those who earnestly seek it. The prophesied return of Lord Jesus Christ to earth is known as the Second Coming. It has been the most anticipated event in history for the Christian people ever since his ascension over 2,000 years ago. Many have tried to predict when, where, and how this would take place, but have not succeeded, leaving us with more questions than answers as we try to understand the true meaning behind this most famous prediction. The first question regarding the second coming of Christ is, when will it be? Thanks to all the clues that he left for us, it is possible to determine the period. And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise up against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places, and all these things are the beginning of birth pains. Jesus Christ tells us that preceding his return, there will be a time of tumult, the mention of both wars and natural disasters sounds familiar to us. Surely Lord Jesus could be describing our current era, which has seen countless beings suffer. It will be a time of great distress, such as there has never been before since the beginning of the world, and will never be again. If that time of troubles were not cut short, no living thing could survive, but for the sake of God's chosen, it will be cut short. Some Bible scholars interpret this to mean that if Christ did not intervene in world affairs, the human race could have eventually exterminated itself, and no living thing could survive. 
It is true that humanity has had the capability of self-annihilation only recently starting in the mid-20th century. This was the precise period that technology allowed wars to be larger in scale and countries began to gather nuclear arms. According to scientists, it was also after 1950 that global warming began its dangerous climb above a level that had never been surpassed for ages. But that's not all. In the Essene Humane Gospel of Christ, which is considered by some to be a more original version of the biblical gospels, Lord Jesus said these additional words in his prophecy. Those that have power shall gather to themselves in greed the lands and the riches of the earth for their own lusts, and thus shall oppress the greater number who have not. For in those days the many shall be held in bondage, but yet not in prison. And they shall be used to increase the riches of the greedy. Yea, even the innocent beasts of the field shall be greatly oppressed. For every cruelty and lust shall be worked against my innocent brothers and sisters of the great household of God. For many shall lust after the taste of flesh, and blood shall flow freely as high as the bridle of the horse. In these lines, Jesus Christ seems to point to our modern times, as we see all around us the exploitation of humans and animals for large-scale profit. Christ in particular laments the large-scale killing of animals by humans for their flesh. Indeed, the rate of animal slaughter increased exponentially in recent decades. Today, trillions of land and sea animals are massacred globally by the meat industry each year. Can we imagine, huh? The animals, they just fly in the air. They don't even touch us. They don't do anything to us. We shoot them down. We trap them, drag them home and eat. We call that food. The fish swimming in the sea, mind his own business. Don't nothing harm to us ever. Don't even know us, don't even see us. We net them up, suffocate them, drag them to our table, and we call that food. And the land animals, they have not been so many. It's just we breed them by inseminating, by using all kinds of techniques to invite them to our planet. Then we torture them, molesting them, suffocate them, and murder them en masse. Imagine if we are in the position of that confined pig or chain cows or suffocating chickens or ducks in overcrowded animal factory. Imagine it's us, then you understand what I'm talking about. So if we are a meat eater, we are responsible for the violence, confinement, oftentimes torture and the murder of 3,000 living sentient beings before we depart from this world. On a global scale, it is also estimated that 60 billion of land animals plus billions more marine animals are killed every year, largely in crowded and miserable factory farming conditions, unhealthy as well, unhygienic conditions. This is truly a war, war on animals. It's very similar to our wars between humans, except that we humans could even defend for ourselves in many cases, but the animals, they're helpless, they're hopeless. And here 
we really mistreat them. This is a war with complete imprisonment, torture, executions with knives and guns, and explosive even. Extremely high financial and health costs for people as well. And destruction of all kinds, such as psychological damage and environmental devastation. And soon, maybe the destruction of the whole planet. If we continue to generate non-peaceful energy, be it through war between humans or war on animals, we will not beget peace, because like beget like. Again, only in this current period of history, from the second half of the 20th century onward, are we experiencing the above predictions? The most destructive wars in our history, the alarming climate changes, the unprecedented killing of animals, and the risk of human self-annihilation due to nuclear arms. As for tornadoes and hurricanes, we must understand that such natural disasters are the consequence of the negative energy in our atmosphere. And this negative energy in our atmosphere is created by our feelings, our thoughts and actions of either hatred, violence and of killing so many humans and innocent animal lives. If we don't change our disaster breeding provoking way, then disaster will never end. I'm also in tears whenever there is a natural disaster anywhere in the world. My heart aches for the suffering of the people. I feel what they feel, and I'm very, very much saddened. But uh, we can only stop the disaster once and for all by tackling the root problem, that is, by stopping the killing of human and mass murdering of innocent animal life. Only when we walk in peace and love on this earth will the earth and nature respond peacefully to us. Finally, everyone should also know that climate change will spare no one. If we don't change, we won't have a planet left. Then everyone from rich and powerful to poor, leaders to citizens, humans to animals, all will be gone, disappear. Based on these observations, it seems that we are now in the period of fulfilling Christ's prophecy. Master, I want to ask you uh, why this, uh, all of these things are happening to us? Why in our generation? Because uh, some accumulate, yeah? Take time to accumulate until the peak of it, yeah? Mm -hmm. Like Rome is not built in one day. 
Jesus Christ's prophecy also warns us that a terrible cleansing would befall the world, just like the great flood in Noah's time. As a consequence of our sinful or negative actions, such as eating meat. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating flesh and blood, and drinking sour wine, and marrying for unnatural reasons, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. We will be right back after a brief message. Welcome back to our program. Some people may wonder how the custom of eating meat long been accepted by society could possibly be linked to our world's destruction. Why must we be vegan? Supreme Master Chain High has given much insight on both the spiritual and physical aspects of this question. The concept of karma, or in the Western terminology, uh, you know, the consequence of our action. As you saw, so shall you reap in the Bible. It's not a Buddhist or Christian concept alone. It's a logical term, meaning that for every action there is a consequence. And the law of karma, meaning the cause and effect, is very exact. So we must stop the killing of other beings and consequently our life will be spared. So to reduce bad karma, we must reverse our actions and create good karma by being benevolent, being kind and being merciful. Then all these quality will return to us in manifold. We will beget mercy from heaven and be able to preserve this precious planet and our lives. As uh, we know by now, animal breeding is the foremost cause of damage to our planet and the health of the people even, and the detrimental effect on our environment as well. It will destroy the world if we do not stop eating and producing meat and animal product. As to your question about who will be saved, the one who has virtue, the one who lives according to universal law of compassion and love, the one who lives according to scientific law, like beget like. Yes, those will be saved.
Two men will be in the field. One will be taken and the other left. Two women will be grinding with the hand mill. One will be taken and the other left. Therefore, keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. Prophecy of Jesus Christ, Holy Bible. Here Christ's words remind us of the screening period that Supreme Master Chin Hai has told us about. The screening occurs through events such as wars or natural disasters. But right now the screening is that people who has bad karma and something will be screened out. Hmm? Through different means, still, still, but less than before, less intense than before, okay, less often. Lord Jesus said that the time of troubles will be shortened for the sake of God's chosen. Supreme Master Chin Hai has likewise often said that calamities have been lessened thanks to a great spirit from heaven, during which humans are given a chance to choose a nobler path and thereby redeem themselves. It is the effect of good meditation, vegan and virtuous actions from all that involved up to now, yeah? As well as heaven's grace, of course. We always have to pray for heaven's grace to help, to bless, to forgive the human, erring human, so that we can have more time, more chance to change, okay? Now, the more merit we earn, the better chance of world survival. The more meditation, the more grace from heaven. The more people vegan, the more life. Just do that also yourself and pray and be grateful as always for whatever grace from heaven and any positive changes from human's heart. I'm always with you and doing it with you in all this. Although she is shy to speak so directly about herself, we know that Supreme Master Chin Nai is the one rescuing and elevating souls during this precarious time so that we humans may still go to heaven. This time because of the deal, yeah? <laughs> Some deal has been made, yeah? Mm. And also because of the, the exceptional time of our planet, that heaven is more lenient. Therefore, heaven has given humans chance. Yes, Master. Easier chance, yes to repent and to do good, so the Master Power can help any with the slightest part of goodness in them. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Or slightest good contribution <laughs> to others. Thank you, Master. For the Son of Man is going to come with His angels in the glory of His Father, and then He will repay each person according to what he has done. Everyone dies one day or another anyway, okay? Yes. The question is where they go. Mm -hmm. Is it the yes. go. Mm -hmm. Okay. So under the protective uh, shield of the master, if you listen to everything that is moral and good and, and kind and compassionate, then you will be safe in uh, high heaven, yeah? Yes. And the most of people who are unaware of the consequence because they have been misled, they also be helped by the master power of the present time, and they will be also elevated in some kind of heaven. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world.
Today, our most beloved master of the present time, Supreme Master Chin Hai, has been bestowing protection and redemption to countless human souls. In addition, she has been dedicated to an infinite spectrum of supporting activities. Her prolific spiritual guidance, her dedicated humanitarian work, and support of animal protection groups, and her creative use of television, books, letters, and poetry to awaken the world to climate change. These are just some of the more visible ways she is working to save our world. In addition, we have observed the coincidence that Supreme Master Chin Hai's body was born in the mid-20th century, the point that various negative trends started to accelerate, as mentioned earlier. Thus, her luminous presence on Earth began just when we needed it the most. Based on what we know, we therefore have grounds to determine that Supreme Master Chin Hai is fulfilling Jesus Christ's prophecy. In fact, there's a range of reasons that support this idea. We invite you to explore them with us when our series continues. In this holiday season, we would like to send our heartfelt gratitude to Lord Jesus Christ for never forsaking our world. As we can tell from the words of love and precaution he left behind. In this era, we are grateful to Supreme Master Chin Hai for being with us, comforting and guiding us to survive and ultimately reach home. May all masters be glorified evermore. We pray that more and more people will experience the heaven that the benevolent ones are bringing to earth in God's blessings. To conclude today's program, please enjoy these cherished moments from one of our past Christmas celebrations with Supreme Master Chin Hai. We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. You got us covered, yeah? Hi <laughs> there, everybody. Oh! Hello, beautiful world. Hi, beautiful people. And Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Voila. Uh, you know, I wish that we could have, uh, you know, a festival like this every day, huh? For all the saints in the whole world, past, present, and future, yeah? We celebrate at least one of them, and this is Jesus Christ, yeah? Uh, just a symbolic, you know? Symbolic celebration for all the masters that have graced our planet. We want to express in this day, our deep gratitude to all their sacrifices and noble teachings. And because of that, because of their sacrifice and noble teachings, that our world became better and better, yeah? And may it remind us all of love, compassion, peace on earth, and that we may walk in the glory of God and bring heaven to earth for all her co-inhabitants and all the flora and fauna as well. I wish you all a really blessed Christmas and a wonderful new year. Love, love. (laughs) 
This is the song describing that uh, the Lord Jesus was born in the cold night, you know, in the manger of the uh, donkeys, yeah? And then uh, say that there are three wise men come. Come here, come, all of you come and have a look at the Lord who has been born so humble and so cold in the middle of the night like this, yeah. Because he want to save human beings. And the song say that, oh, please, donkey, oh, please, uh, cow, please breathe into the manger, the, the warm air of your breath to warm the Lord of human who has been born in this way. Đêm đông lạnh lẽo Chúa sinh ra đời Chúa sinh ra đời nằm trong hang đá Trong hang bê lem, ánh sáng tỏa loa từng vùng. Nghe trên không trung, tiếng hát thiên thần vang lên. Đàn hát xeo rạt tiếng hát sướng ca, dươm vang xa đầy chúa thiên tòa giáng sinh vì ta. Người hỡi hãy kiếp bước tới đến xem nơi hang bê lem đầy chúa giang sinh khó khăn thấp hèn. Nửa đêm mừng chúa giang sinh ra chốn dương trần. Người đem ơn phước xuống cho muôn dân lầm than. Nơi hang bê lem thiên thần thương ca thiên chúa vinh danh chúng nhân an hòa nơi hang bê lem mục đồng xung quanh ca hát vang lên mến yêu chân thành ngày nay thiên chúa giáng sinh ra chốn dương trần người đem ân phước xuống cho muôn dân lầm than nơi hang bê lem chiến lửa thở hơi tan giá đêm đông ấm thân con người nơi hang bê lem thiên thần sướng ca thiên chúa vinh danh chúng dân an Nơi hang bê lem mục đồng xung quanh Ca hát vang lưng mến yêu chân thành Thank you for your company on today's program multi-part series on ancient predictions about our planet Prophecy of the Golden Age, Part 17, a special tribute to Lord Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. 